The scripture reading for Sunday, July 26th is from Matthew's Gospel, the 13th chapter. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. Today's message is by John Dunham, lay pastoral associate at Christ Lutheran Church in Libby. His message is titled, The Absolute Love of God. Grace and peace to all from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today's sermon is the absolute love of God. In these days of worry about the pandemic situation we now face, might I suggest that we still have plenty to be thankful for. Warm sunny days, this exceedingly beautiful area where we live, access to many outdoor activities, the list could go on, and communing with and enjoying the bond we have with nature while isolating to protect those we cherish and love. Even as I speak, the dangers of this pandemic are growing daily. I urge you to keep safe and to follow the established guidelines. Wear a mask when going outside the home. Wash your hands many times a day. Avoid touching your face and only make necessary trips to replenish supplies. Each of us can do his or her part to make sure we keep this small community safe and healthy. Today's Gospel reading and sermon are from the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter, which deals with many parables taught by Jesus. The definition of parable, according to Webster, it's a short, simple story, usually of an occurrence of a familiar kind, from which a moral or religious lesson may be drawn. Today, we have a buffet of parables served up all at once. At least this is what the gospel reading feels like to me. Stories tossed about beside each other, creating a swirl of metaphor no poet or preaching professor would condone. And yet, this is exactly how Jesus chose to teach about the kingdom of heaven. The reign of God cannot be contained in one story or image. It is always just beyond the realm of our imagination, more than any one parable can contain. So we hear these stories together. Imagine a mustard seed intentionally sown in a field. Farmers hated mustard seeds. Why plant something like that? Although it would grow to be the largest bush in the field, with many branches to offer creatures a place to rest. No one would plan it purposely. Maybe the story meant something else entirely. Perhaps it was speaking to our lack of faith. Here is much food for thought. The bush represents all kinds of doctrine, and in that we see the failure of Christianity revealed beforehand. Then Jesus went on to say, The kingdom of heaven is like the leaven, or yeast, which a woman put in three measures until it was all leavened. This produced bread which fed her family and neighbors and many others. Today, we are asked to live as Jesus lived and spread his message, or meal, far and wide. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. 
and for joy over it, he goes and sells all he has and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all he had and bought it. Both of these relate to the fact that Jesus is worth more than anything else. What do these stories or parables or word images do for us? They open our imagination to the reign of God. I think it is fair to say that in Matthew's Gospel, as well as in Mark and Luke, Jesus is preoccupied with the reign or kingdom of God. After his baptism, his time in the wilderness, Jesus emerged speaking of the kingdom. Repent, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Through Jesus' teaching, preaching, and healing, he announced and embodied God's reign. So the parables we have before us today have great value for us and for future generations. They reveal the very heart of Jesus' mission and ministry. With these parables dominating my thoughts, I now noticed a couple of ideas that had not occurred to me prior to this time. First, the reign of God is present with us here and now. He does not reserve for when we die, but has the power to shape how we live right now, daily. The second thing I notice in these stories is that God's reign is inextricably bound to ordinary life on this planet we call home. Soil and seed, bread, a farmer's field, harvest of the sea, these subjects are great, but they seem so ordinary, so everyday normal. I must confess that I feel personally overwhelmed with this idea of a God who deals with the ordinary. I feel that if I could just get it together, if I could be the kind of person God created me to be, patient, kind, and justice-seeking. If I could be the model of how a citizen should behave during a pandemic, or if I could become the most anti-racist person in my community, if I could pray without ceasing and radiate the fruits of the Spirit, then I would experience the reign of God among us. The problem is I keep tripping over myself becoming tangled in my own selfishness and privilege, my own fear and doubt, my own impatience and need for control. Thank goodness the reign of God comes to us, here, now, not because of who we are, but who God is. That is, who we see in Jesus, God's steadfast, saving love, in the flesh, in the world. The reign of God is the reign of divine love and grace poured out for all, creation poured out for you. Imagine God like that farmer and merchant who emptied themselves of all their possessions in order to have what they value most, Christ. We also are that treasure cherished by God. In this vein, we commit to follow Jesus' example and are therefore prompted by God's love for us and all humanity. We make masks and sew quilts, we sing and pray, we coach and teach others' children. We paint houses and mow our neighbors' lawns. We welcome strangers. We find the courage to be strangers. All of these actions we do because of God's example of never-ending and ever-faithful love for us. There is so much going on in this world, more than meets the eye. Thanks be to God for giving us a glimpse of the kingdom in Christ Jesus and for the promise that one day, all creation will be gathered into God's gracious reign. Amen.